Hello friends, welcome to Expert Medical Coding. In today's video, we are going to learn about AHA Coding Clinic 2023 third quarter part 1. We are going to cover in this video how to code CDG in newborn that is congenital disorder of glycosylation in newborn and how to code temporal lobe epilepsy. So let's get started. Let's start with the first one that is congenital disorder of glycosylation that is CDG in newborn. Now let us see the scenario. A 6 day old infant with multiple congenital anomalies, coagulopathy, intrauterine growth restriction and dysmorphic craniofacial features. So the infant is 6 day old and he is having these conditions and he was transferred from hospital A to the hospital B and ICU. Now in the final diagnostic statement the physician has stated as congenital disorder of glycosylation that is CDG associated with mutation in the ALG1 gene. So actually the CDG is a congenital genetic disorder. CDG is specifically indexed to code E74A9, E74A9. E74A9. So whenever you, you will go to the index and search for disorder of under that if you search for CDG that is congenital glycosylation you will get a code of E74A9. If you cross reference that E7489 in tabular list, then you will find the description of other specified disorders of carbohydrate metabolism. Now the question here is, since this condition is not classified in chapter 17, the chapter 17 is of Q series course that is congenital malformations, deformations and chromosomal abnormalities. So the question is, would it be appropriate to assign code P9689? other specified conditions originating in the perinatal period along with the code E7489 for CDG in a newborn. So the answer here is no we cannot take E7489 along with P9689. So the answer is assign only code E7489 that is other specified disorders of carbohydrate metabolism for CDG in a newborn. We should not take code P9689. Why? Because the infant was born with an inherited genetic condition but not a perinatal condition. Since perinatal conditions are not the same as congenital conditions, a perinatal code is not used to describe congenital, genetic or chromosomal disorders. And if you go to the chapter 16, in the beginning you will see a note, excludes to note. That is, endocrine, nutritional and metabolic diseases, E-series codes, E00 to E88. So as per the extrudes two nodes, we can quote both together. But still, we should not quote both together because perinatal conditions are different from congenital conditions. So although there is an extrudes two node at the beginning of chapter 16, that is certain conditions originating in the perinatal period for endocrine, nutritional and metabolic diseases, in this case, an additional perinatal code is not appropriate since CDG is not a perinatal condition. So even though there is a extrude 2 node, we should not code both the conditions together because both are different. So whenever you will come across CDG in newborn, you have to code E series code but along with that P series code should not be taken. Okay, the next scenario is temporal lobe epilepsy. The question is, what is the appropriate code assignment for temporal lobe epilepsy? See, the temporal lobe epilepsy is the most common form of focal epilepsy. So, if you go to the index and if you search under epilepsy focal, it will lead you to the C instruction. That is epilepsy, localization related symptomatic with simple partial seizures. So, if you will find this under index, you will get a code of G40109. So this is the exact code for the temporal lobe epilepsy. So whenever you will come across in the report as temporal lobe epilepsy, you will get a code of G40109 for temporal lobe epilepsy. Please like, share and subscribe to Expert Medical Coding. Thanks for watching.